1830. We're at Santa Marta, a small town in northern Colombia facing the Caribbean. Forty years earlier in Caracas. Oh, in the name of goodness, where's my carriage, I'm late? The city is under Spanish rule. At last. Simon! <gasps> Simon! Hippolyta, <gasps> why doesn't my no, mother no, love no, me? Fire, little one. Your mother loves you. Six years later, you have to awaken consciousness and understanding, my boy. Unfortunately, our society is corrupt and not fit for men. Yet, even in the days of Pericles, the ancient Greeks said man is the measure of all things. You see, Simon, this country needs a radical change in society. What we must have is a liberated society, free of Spanish rule. That one man be made to serve another is shameful. No more of that, son. No more and never again. Oy, oy, mi amor, a besar tus labios, quisiera. Your flowers are so beautiful, Simon. You are very foolish. What would I not do to please you, my dear Teresa? What can I do? Such a priceless pearl must also have a worthy setting. Maria Teresa del Toro and Simon Bolivar lived on in intense happiness, but it was short-lived. Carried off by a terrible fever, she was to remain forever Simon's only great love. 18-4. Now we're in Paris. Why don't we play the game of lookalikes, my friends? And I suggest we start with Monsieur Beauharnais. Tell us which animal Simon brings to mind. Hmm. He's a strange bird. Every time I see him, I can't help thinking of a sparrow. Exactly that, a sparrow. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> an inspiration. Ha. Huh. A pecking bird. That is an insult, monsieur. I won't allow it. You will hear from my seconds. Oh, my goodness, Simon, really. You can be short-tempered, all right. I love it when you are like this, swift as lightning. But you are quite wrong. I assure you, you misunderstand. Here, we are all very fond of you, Simon. Eh? Oh. Simon, Simon, Rodriguez, you in Paris. Hmm. Well, Simon, you're so elegant, brilliant, but a young man with your qualities has better things to do, you know. There are higher callings than visiting uh, Parisian ladies, no matter how beautiful. Uh, more passionate pursuits like liberty and the liberation of our country. How I did admire Bonaparte, the genius of liberty. Now emperor he is, ah, truly the height of hypocrisy. Yeah, sooner or later, all princes become tyrants and all power corrupts. True, but a glory such as he had known. We await the one who will deliver our beautiful land from bondage. Tell me, Simon, whom do you see for this role? Miranda, yes, only Miranda, no one else. 1810, it's a Bonaparte who reigns in Madrid. At Caracas, a junta takes advantage of the situation to disrupt the Spanish forces. And Simon, with the rank of colonel and elected official, is named head of mission, sent to England to request aid. But his deepest desire is to find his famous compatriot Miranda, friend of high and mighty Miranda, a Spanish officer, Russian colonel, general of the French Revolution. And he's well-educated, uh, oh yes, and a master of war. This Francesco de Miranda. Our great country is awakening to liberty, but the men who command our junta have had no experience. Their mistakes will be costly to our cause. We need a great leader. General, will you hear your country's call and be that leader? But disappointments were not long in coming. The country is divided. Ideas of joining together and tolerance still have a long way to go. Yet all the same, in July 1811... The Congress declares unanimously the Republic of Venezuela free and independent. The Spanish troops are everywhere in the country and on the offensive, and the people must defend themselves. Is it an army such as this that a general of my stature must lead into battle? Disappointed in his troops, bitter, General Miranda will fight badly and in the end will ask the Spanish General Monteverdi for an armistice, which turns into capitulation in time. 
Later, informing no one, General Miranda would get away by any means, go to England and leave this unworthy country. Miranda is a coward. He's a traitor. Eh, surely not. Disgusted, yes. A man with a quick eye who could discern before others the lack of maturity in his people in the face of great ideas of liberty and independence. Where's the chief? One moment, gentlemen. Coming. Your conduct has been unworthy, General Miranda. We expect you to explain yourself. You are under arrest. Ah. <clears throat> Words talk. That is all you are capable of. And Miranda would end his days in prison. As for Simon, after a number of tribulations, one fine day he is again commanding a garrison at Barranca, a community of no special interest, in the young Republic of Cartagena. The garrison of 200 men isn't very uh, enterprising. What in a very short time the young Colonel Bolivar is to achieve with this handful of men is truly astonishing. Are you two? I am counting on you to turn these men into soldiers. Get on with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Wear proper boots. You understand? Take slow, careful aim, then fire. Fix bayonets, then forward. They also built embarkation points. To the cheers of the crowd, they left the town for Tenerife, where the Spanish flag was flying. Yes, the town was quickly taken. And then they would cross the Andes. This is the city of Huenta. which, in turn, is going to be taken. <laughs> then came the assault on Merida. The victorious advance continued. The 6th of August, 1813, after marching over 2,000 kilometers, fighting battle after battle without a single defeat, after this admirable campaign, here is Bolivar with his men in Caracas. It's wonderful. But in Europe, the situation has changed considerably. Wellington inflicted a stinging defeat on the French at Waterloo, and Ferdinand's return to the throne is imminent. Huh? All around Caracas, Spanish troops huh? backed up by reinforcements huh? were becoming aggressive, and Bolivar has to strike hard to convince the undecided he had to be merciless. A merciless war. That's my kind of war. I can't wait. The Spanish commander, Monteverde, has just refused again to exchange prisoners, sir. He says he refuses to deal with rebels. Our men continue to be tortured and mm -hmm. even executed. Mm -hmm. Under these conditions, kill all our Spanish prisoners, all we have. That should make him think. Oh. oh. A soldier, even when victorious, has no right to govern his country. He is only the defender of her liberties. Therefore, you must elect your representatives and the government of the land. But do not burden me with an office I am not competent to hold. No, no, no stay, 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 Since the people insist, I can only bow to their will. <laughs> there, there, 
will be many battles. Among them, Aurora will remain famous. We can't hold out much longer, General. The troops are starting to desert. We cannot allow ourselves to lose this battle. Colonel, you bring up the rear with your dragoons. You others are to shoot any of our men running away from the battle. Desert us. I am counting on you, Colonel. I expect you to do your duty, Colonel. Cavalry with me, charge! This time, once again, it was victory. But Bolivar's problems are far from over. Because allied with the Spanish now is the frightening, bloodthirsty Boves, chief of the Lineros, horsemen of the plains, Indians and Creoles, whose frustrations and misery he knew how to play on. We fight all the whites. Kill them all, the Indian persecutors. This land is ours. Yes, look massacre all of them, down to the very last one. <laughs> There at San Mateo, Bolivar and his troops are ready for battle, awaiting the expected attack of Boves and his savage Llanero. Aggressors fled. But the heroic victory at San Mateo will be short lived. And three months later, facing the same Boves at Puerta, eh, it will be a disaster. And once again, all is lost. Haiti, 1816. In the name of all Republican Venezuelans, I wish to thank you most warmly and sincerely for all that you have done, all the assistance given to our great cause, President Petion. Ah, but insofar as you seek to abolish slavery in our country, it is quite fitting and proper that I help you in any way possible, General Bolivar. And thanks to President Petion's help, Simon Bolivar is able to carry on the fighting. May I heartily welcome you among us, General Paez. I thank you, Liberador. I can tell you since Bovis' death, I have succeeded in turning his men into fervent Republicans. <laughs> I am quite sure that together we will accomplish great things. Look, an enemy garrison. How do we get the army across, Paez? We've only to make use of these boats. All I will need is some 50 men. Victories and defeats, and here we are in 1819 at Angostura, the very city where the Congress is being held. The government of the Republic must rest upon the sovereignty of the people, the separation of power, civil liberty, the abolition of slavery, the suppression of privilege. Yes, our people have been under the yoke of ignorance and tyranny, unable to acquire knowledge or power or virtue. Your task will be difficult. I relinquish to the President of the Congress all my civil powers. For my part, I have decided to continue the struggle for the Republic's liberty against the oppressor. Oh, what 
terrible heat this is. I'm roasting. Ah, at last some rain. This will cool things off a bit. At last! Gentlemen, I should like to introduce my new chief of staff, Colonel Santander. General Morillo is entrenched here with the Spanish. Now, during the rainy season, nobody ever attacks, never. And this is precisely what we'll do at Tunja. This will open the way to Bogota. It's hundreds of kilometers. Here at Tame, Santander will arrange a halting place. You, Paez, will go along the river Apure and attack the enemy from the north. And we, gentlemen, we will attack here, where it's least expected, this way, across the Andes. He's gone crazy, our leader. We're going across the Andes. Count on us, General. We'll follow you anywhere. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mountain sickness, it's nothing. <laughs> it uh, may, Colonel Santander, true to his word, is waiting at the appointed spot. Hey! You shall clothe the naked, so said our Lord. As you can see, these men who suffer to win our liberty are naked. And so, my brothers, you must clothe them now, right now. Make you a gift of this horse, General Bolivar, to thank you for fighting for our freedom. It is for you to win this battle. We are counting on you. Yeah! Hey, well, 
the victories at Valgash and Boyaca opened to Bolivar the way to Bogota. Bogota the opulent. There, as acting vice president, he will leave General Santander. Another officer will return to Venezuela and report to the Angostura Congress. I declare the states of Venezuela, New Granada, and Ecuador united under the name the Republic of Colombia. Hey! I nominate for President Simon Bolivar. And here is Bolivar fighting in Ecuador, ably assisted by General Sucre. Yes, and this should be the triumphant entry to Quito, the capital where Bolivar is to meet a new passion, oh. Manuela Sanes. At Guayaquil, he meets San Martin, the liberator of South America. El Liberador, I agree totally with your ideas of federating all the countries of your great continent. But I feel that for the present there is too much intrigue, ambition. No one has sufficient political maturity. Then, Protector, it will be for future generations to complete our work. Mm. But I am more than ever convinced that it is a grand and good idea. In that case, since you are certain, I will abandon the task to you. From Guayaquil, Bolivar moves toward Lima in Peru. Victories in Hunin and especially Ayacucho, which Sucre had masterminded, brought the Spanish domination to an end, and this was soon to be replaced by Bolivar's rule. As I live and breathe, Simon! Simon Rodriguez. Yes. <laughs> you recognize me after 20 years. <laughs> oh, yes, the beard is longer, but yes. For one thing, you're wearing the same clothes, aren't you? I'm about to set off for the South. You will come along with us. Yeah. Hey, viva! I am called to Lima. You two friends, you will help me to build this Bolivia we have just founded. You, Field Marshal Sucre, will be the first president. Mm. As for you, my friend Simon, you'll be Minister of Public Education. Mm -hmm. I suggest that our schools be co-educational, the sexes are equal. And in this way, you young ladies will be able to prove to the boys that you're uh, worth just as much as they are. President, who is this visionary whom the Liberator has given us to educate all our children? They're behind the times, jackasses. They are living in a past century. Very well, since that is how they want it, you can get along without me. I'm leaving. But with the impetus of the ambitious Vice President Santander, Simon's fortunes changed. The Congress at Bogota would relieve him of his command over the forces. And everywhere throughout the country, there's vaulting ambition. <laughs> I will be the future president. Me, me, me. Very soon I shall be the new president, yes. It will be me. No, I am the one. I'll be the president. Dissension rages in Bogota, and once again the Congress has to call on the man for all seasons. Uh, Simon, my brother. Simon, my friend, a welcome <laughs> to you. I am so very glad to see you again. <laughs> 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 Wake up, Simon, wake up! There. Oh, Simon, my friend, I'm so pleased that you escaped that dastardly attempt on your life. The traitor who organized this plot, General Santander, is condemned to death. <laughs> no, no, not a death sentence for a man who fought courageously for his country. I am the best man of the continent. No, the best man is me. No, no, I am the one. Of course not, I am the best. Apparently I'm not needed. I relinquish all this power that you so covet. Manage yourselves, but as for me, I am leaving. Simon was hoping that once again they would call him back, but it wasn't to be. Alas, I believe we have only one hope, if the country is not to plunge into chaos. 
My son, my brother, Sucre. Liberator, Liberator, Liberator! Marshal Sucre has just been assassinated. Who would serve a revolution is plowing the sea? Sucre, my son, revolution. Plowing the sea. Always on the move, covering thousands and thousands of kilometers. Simon Bolivar frittered his time away gathering honors and glory. In fact, the foundation of his power was shaky, and he had gathered a number of Brutuses around him. When the man who wanted to unite all of Latin America died at 47, the region had no fewer than 16 countries. <laughs>